Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 77. Here we have a CT arthrogram image of the shoulder. So this is a CT arthrogram, and the question that we have is, in this CT arthrogram, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a complete rotator cuff tear, a full thickness rotator cuff tear, a labral tear, or a joint capsule avulsion? What's the most likely diagnosis? And of course, the answer here is a full thickness rotator cuff tear. If we take a look here, in a CT arthrogram, we have dense contrast that's distending the glenohumeral joint. And the key to all orthogram cases is to understand where contrast is and where contrast should not be. But we also have contrast here in the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, right? It's contrast underneath the acromion, and it's going past the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The glenohumeral joint capsule does not extend past the greater tuberosity. So if you start to see contrast going past the greater tuberosity, you can be confident that it's in the subacromial cell deltoid bursa. The only way that contrast can go from the glenohumeral joint all the way into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa, it is that it has to traverse the thickness of the rotator cuff. So this is the supraspinatus muscle. This here is the tendon. The only way it can get from here to here is it has to breach the entire thickness of the tendon, thus making this a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Now, this is not necessarily a complete tear because a complete tear is a full thickness, full width tear. So this is a full thickness tear, but it's not necessarily a full width tear. We don't have a sagittal image to assess whether this is a full width tear. So we can only be confident that this is a full thickness rotator cuff tear. And again, when you do an orthogram, the contrast should stay within the glenohumeral joint. If it goes into a different structure, like for example, the labrum, then that's a labral tear because that means there's a tear or a perforation within the labrum. If it extends into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa, like we just saw in the index case, that indicates a full thickness tear, right? And again, this is not a complete tear because remember, the rotator cuff is a three-dimensional structure. It has a thickness, which is the craniocaudad dimension seen in the coronal plane, and it has a width, an AP dimension that's seen in the sagittal plane. So we know nothing about the width based on the image that I showed you. So the best answer here would be a full thickness rotator cuff tear. This is another image in the study that actually shows the full thickness tear, right? This is along the anterior fibers where you can see contrast extending from the articular surface where the bone is all the way to the bursal surface where the subacromial deltoid bursa is. This linear line here, or this dense line, is the contrast that extends into the entire thickness of the rotator cuff. So a nice example of a CT arthrogram demonstrating a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to the MedED page, and we'll see you next week for another high-yield, amazing MSK unknown case.